day was silent Surely it was through Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty too Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling the fire stirring something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon oh, resurrection power runs in my veins too yeah I believe there's another miracle here in this room this is the sound of the dry bones out of this is the
Hey, welcome to Central. My name is Andy Beatty. I'm the teaching minister here. Excited to have you watching with us today. And this morning, I'd like to start off with a verse that Paul talks about in the book of Romans, uh, chapter uh, yeah, chapter 7, verse 15. And it's probably a verse you're familiar with, uh, or at least can resonate with. He says this. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. He was talking about a very common battle between our fleshly nature and our earthly or our earthly nature, uh, our fallen nature, and how it wants to do what it wants to do. And so for those of us that are Christians, the spiritual nature that is connected to God wants to do things that's pleasing to God. All right. So if you're a Christian, you know this battle. Your flesh wants to do one thing, but your spirit wants to do another thing. And that thing is going to be contrary to your fleshly nature. So God wants you to do one thing, and our earthly impulse oftentimes wants us to do the other thing. There's this battle going on that is often fought in the mind. The mind decides, should I obey my lower earthly nature, or should I obey the spirit that's connected to God? But the battle is fought in the mind. The problem is, so many people today are losing the battle. Because their mind is polluted with poisonous thoughts, with lies from the evil one. And so I want to tell you where we're going to go in this series that we're just simply calling poisonous. All right, here's where we're going, and I'm excited uh, for God's word on these subjects. Next week, I promise you'll want to be here, you'll want to listen, you'll probably want to watch this over and over again. And there may even be some tension, some frustration. Uh, Some of you may get mad at me. Uh, Maybe you're going to bash me on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but I really don't care because I want to raise some really challenging issues for us as Christians about the things that we allow to influence us and whether they are poisonous or whether they are helping our spiritual maturity. I believe that we are poisoned by a lot of things that have just become the norm in our lives now. We are poisoned by media, by the television shows we watch, by the things that we read, by the music that we listen to. And I really hope that for a lot of people, there's a lot of serious discussion on the other side of next week's message. Uh, Then the week after that, uh, I'm going to be out for a few weeks for some uh, medical things going on. So Lyle is going to take us through poisonous friendships uh, because there are so many of us that we have relationships, we have friendships that are not good for us. They're poisonous, they're they're damaging us, Uh, and he's going to walk us through how we manage those and how do we minister to those people in those relationships. Uh, Then the week after that, uh, I'll still be out. Uh, My brother-in-law, Joe, is going to bring a message about poisonous words. The words that we say, the words that we speak, the words that we think, they can create life or they can create death. And I think oftentimes we are living in a poisonous environment because of the words we say, and they actually have the power to destroy someone's faith. Then the following week, uh, I'll still be out, and so Ken's bringing a message on poisonous religion. Jesus didn't come to make us religious. He came to bring us life. When we, when we f- fall into religion, and we just start following rules and do's and don'ts, it's very easy to become legalistic. And that can actually kill our faith and make us look a lot more like the Pharisees than what we want to look like. So today, though, I want to talk to you about poisonous thoughts, poisonous thoughts. And if I get a little bit into this message, it's because I have struggled with, with poisonous thoughts uh, in my life, and I have worked really hard to overcome them, and I think now I'm in a better spot than I've probably ever been when it comes to poisonous thoughts. I've made a lot of progress at taking those thoughts and replacing them with truth. And I don't know about for you, but, but for me, there are often times, and, and especially in the past, where these negative thoughts that were kind of burned onto the hard drive of my mind, that would just play over and over and over again. It's just like playing on loop oftentimes. If I was going to meet someone that I considered important, or if this meeting seemed really important, I would be so nervous, and my mind would say, don't mess up, don't mess up. You always say something stupid. You always do something stupid. Remember that one time you had this really important meeting, and you spilled iced tea all over the person next to you? Yep. That happened, right? It's like, well, you're going to do that again. Don't do that again. And then I'd meet them and I'd say something stupid or I'd do something stupid because I just kept thinking, don't do something stupid. You're going to do it. And then I'd be like, ah, see, you're an idiot. I, you know, you're nothing but a loser. Over and over again, these thoughts just pound through your head. 
Uh, or, you know, when I first started preaching, there would be times where I'd be speaking to the audience and going through my mind as I'm talking about uh, life-changing uh, topics and messages, going through my mind is they don't care. They think this is stupid. You should do, do something else. And my mind would just play these thoughts over and over and over again. And so I've had to learn to replace those harmful thoughts with truth, that I am going to declare the living and active word of God, and that it's alive, and that it can pierce people's hearts. And so the Holy Spirit has been working on my heart. I pray that you have made preparations to allow the Holy Spirit to work on your heart as you're listening to this. Because what goes through the mind often dictates how the battle will go. The mind is where the battle is being fought. And so we have to learn to replace those lies that come from the devil with the truth that comes from God. Because the bottom line is, if you get stuck thinking negative thoughts, you will become a negative person. If you think like God, if you work to align your heart with God's, you will become more like Christ. And so here's the main thing. Here's our point today. By the power of God's word, we want to identify and reject poisonous thoughts. We want to identify and reject poisonous thoughts. Anything that's inconsistent with God's truth, we're going to reject those lies. Proverbs 4.23 tells us, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Some translations will say, Above all else, guard your thoughts. Everything you do flows from it. We have to carefully guard our thoughts. Whenever there is something that tries to get into our brain that is inconsistent with God's truth, we have to guard our thoughts. Because our thoughts drive our lives. As a person thinks, so is he in the heart. Rather than meditating on anything that is contrary to God's word, we have to, to stop and guard our hearts, guard our minds against anything that is a lie and not let it into our brain. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5 says this. Paul says, The weapons we fight are not with weapons of the world. Remember, we're fighting a spiritual battle. Spirit versus flesh. We don't fight with worldly weapons. We have spiritual weapons. The Bible says they have divine power. The Greek word that's translated as power is the word dunamis. Okay, dunamis. We get our word dynamite from this. It's the explosive power of God, the overwhelming power of God. Our spiritual weapons, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Uh, if you are looking on a paper Bible, you could write out to the side, strongholds. The Greek word translated there is ochurama. Ochurama. And it means a prisoner locked by deception. Right? I can't think of a better possible way to describe what is happening to so many people today. So many people who are locked into a prison of thoughts by deception from the devil. When the devil speaks, he lies. And he gets us to believe all sorts of lies about ourselves. So many people today are not becoming who God wants them to be because they're locked in this deception of lies. And the only thing that's going to overcome that is the word of God. But it's so easy to believe these lies about ourselves that aren't true. And then you become locked in this prison of lies. And, and it takes the power of God in his word to demolish these. Scripture goes on to say that we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God how? By taking captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We're going to carefully guard our minds. If there is anything that is not pleasing to God, we're going to reject it. We're going to take our thoughts captive. We're not prisoner to the lies. Instead, the, our thoughts are our prisoners. We demolish those strongholds with God's word. We take it captive and we make it obedient to Christ. We're not going to replay the old recordings, those old things that are built on the hard drive, because they aren't true. We're not going to think of the, the things, the lies that we've been told. We're going to think and, and base our truth on God's word. And take captive our thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. Let's think about and identify uh, and allow the Holy Spirit to show us where our poisonous thoughts are, though. Okay, so there's a, a lot of different methods, a lot of different thoughts people struggle with. Uh, sometimes it's discontented thoughts. Sometimes it's critical thoughts. We have to be willing to identify where we're prone to poisonous thoughts so we know where to reject them and replace them with God's truth. 
All right. So let's just kind of just we're just going to fly through these real quick. Right, so there's negative thoughts. I, for one, have battled with negative thoughts, and I'm doing so much better today than in the past. But some of you know what I'm talking about. There are some people that are just like disgustingly positive, and you make us negative people just that much more miserable with your positive happiness. All right, so knock it off. No, I'm just kidding. Right, but you know what I'm talking about. Like they're happy. They're happy no matter what. And then there's other people. It's like, no, this is the worst. I'm, yeah, oh man, this, it's sunny. Oh, I, well, the sun's really dangerous. Oh, well, look at the snow. It's beautiful. Well, the snow, the snow's really dangerous. You know, just negative, negative, negative. Struggling with negative thoughts in every situation, every circumstance. Some, sometimes the poisonous thoughts may be, you know, I don't have what it takes. You know, I, I'm not adequate. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm never going to measure up no matter how hard I try. Uh, everybody else, they get, they get all the breaks, but not me. I'm living a country song. If something bad's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. If something good's going to happen, it's not going to happen to me. It's going to happen to somebody else. I, I just can't do it all. There's too much. I'm not good enough. I'm overwhelmed. I can't get it done. No one appreciates me. I mean, I have the spiritual gift of giving. Everyone else around me has the spiritual gift of taking me for granted, right? It's just not fair. And and sometimes it's simple things. It's not even big things. It's just like on a daily thing. Like I'll, you know, look at, look at his hair. I can never get my hair to do what I want it to do. Or, oh, my cell phone. It's the worst. It dropped another call. They were out of milk. This is just terrible. Just negative, negative, defeating thoughts. Another one is fearful thoughts. Jeez, uh, anyone struggle with that in 2020, <laughs> right? It's pretty easy to worry and to, and to be consumed with fear. Like we're living in this pandemic. We're living in a time when our lives have all been changed in unprecedented ways. Whether you wanted the change or not, it was happening. You know, and there's supposed to be like murder hornets or something on the way. Uh, the countryside is evidently rolling with uh, cocaine crazy pigs. Uh, in Florida, they've got meth alligators or something. People are flushing their meth down the toilet. And so their alligators are like meth alligators. Now, and oddly enough, that's not even the worst part about Florida right now. There's a, a black hole big enough to swallow up like a million of our sons. And 2020 is only halfway through. So unless 2020 is like a mullet and we party on the back end, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that it's going to be really easy to give in to fear, right? And so maybe you're struggling with that, fearful thoughts. Maybe you struggle with discontentedness. You're just discontent. I don't like my body. I don't like the way I look. I'm not attractive. I can't be happy unless I'm dating someone. I can't be happy unless I'm married. I married the wrong person. I wish my spouse was more like that, was a better leader, was a better provider. I wish my wife wouldn't nag, whatever it is. Like never content in the situation. Man, we would be so happy if we just had kids. I wish we had kids. I wish we had more kids. I wish we had different kids. Uh, these kids are driving me crazy. Why did we want to have kids? I wish I had a better job. I wish I had a bigger house. I wish I had a nicer car. I wish I had granite tops. I wish I had more shiplap. I wish I had a bigger walk-in closet. I can't be happy unless I have it. Discontented, poisonous thoughts. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a critical spirit. Maybe that's the thought that you struggle with. We see somebody and we're like, I would never do that. Who does he think he is? Is he actually wearing chacos? Who wears those? Can you believe the way she dresses, flipping her stuff around in the house of God? You know, a critical spirit. But, you know, these people, they they walk in, I I walk into work and I'm the only one that can do this. I work with a bunch of idiots. This place would fall apart without me. I know people have the spiritual gift of criticism when it comes to churches, criticizing everything that's going on. I don't like this place. The music is too loud. The music's too slow. The music's too quiet. Those of you watching on, my, on video, you're probably like, I don't like this guy. What's he doing? What's, why is his face so red? What's going on? Discontent thoughts. Here's the thing. We have to guard our thoughts because we do have a choice in the matter. The battle in the spirit world is often going to be won or lost in our mind. If you want to find negative things, if you want to find things to be critical about, if you want to find things to be nasty about, you'll find it. Or you can make a choice to choose to reject what is harmful and embrace what is true. So if we're going to identify those harmful thoughts and embrace God's word, it will mean that we have to reject the poisonous thoughts. There's simply not room for both in our life. You can't believe the lie and the truth. Reject the lie, accept the truth. We're going to replace 
poisonous thoughts in our heads with God's truth. So identify, reject, and then replace with the truth. Understanding that those negative, harmful things are not from God. I'm not going to meditate on it. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not going to let that get in. I'm not going to let that influence who I become and what I believe. I'm going to identify, I'm going to reject, and I'm going to replace with God's truth. I love the way Paul says this in Philippians chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. He says, The peace of God, which, trans- which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever is pure, think about it. Whatever is lovely, think about it. Whatever is noble, think about it. Meditate on it. Let it infuse you. Let it change your heart. You don't think about the things that cause you fear and worry and and a critical nature and discontent. You think about things that are right and pure and admirable and lovely. You meditate on those things. As you do, the Word of God will start to renew your mind and you will become a different person. I want to give you an example of this. Okay, so believe it or not, uh, before I was diagnosed with MS, uh, I ran a half marathon, I ran several five milers, a four miler, and lots of 5Ks. I really liked running. Uh, I liked the time, I liked the solidarity, uh, I liked the challenge, uh, and it didn't matter though. So if I was running a, a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles, uh, or if I was running a 5K, which is 3.1 miles, it didn't matter how long I trained. It didn't really matter how long the race was. There was a point in every race, every time I went out to, rent, to run, where these thoughts would creep into my head. They would be, I, I can't do this. Now, what was I thinking? Why did I pay money to run this race? Why am I doing this? What if I die out here? If I quit now, would I even be able to find my body? You know, these thoughts would creep in, Andy, you're so slow. Andy, you're the biggest person here. Football players aren't designed to run this long. You're getting passed by the moms that are pushing strollers with their toddlers in it. You can't do this. For me, every race, there was a point, whether it was a three-mile race or a 13-mile race, there was a point where those thoughts would creep into my mind, where those thoughts would tell me that I can't do this. Whether it was the Cap City Half Marathon or a 5K, that voice would get louder and louder and louder. And I had to make the choice to block it out. I knew I could do it. I had trained. I had done it before. But that voice was getting louder. It was getting harder and harder to ignore. But in every race, I'd hit this point where I'd get past that mental hurdle, past the negative thoughts, and then I felt like I could just run for days. My pace would increase. It would actually get better as the race went on. My legs would feel better. I could breathe again. My thoughts were focused on how much I enjoyed this. And instead of wondering where they would find my body, I knew that I would cross that finish line. This to me is a a really good example of what we have to do with our minds. We have to train our minds to keep on going. We know the truth. And even when those voices, even when those thoughts get loud and get increasingly negative and become overwhelming, remember, identify, reject, and replace. Be consumed with God's word. Replace the negative thoughts with God's word. When you think on the truth, when you dwell on the truth, when you meditate on the truth, it can change your life. Even if you're not sure, you can still identify and reject the lies and work to believe the truth. Because when you start working to believe the truth long enough, it's going to seep into your soul and you're going to start to live that truth. And it can be a little awkward, just like me running a 5K. It can be a little tedious, like me running a half marathon. But I did it and we can do it. By the power of Christ, we can identify negative thoughts. We can reject the lies that come from the devil. And by making a choice, we can replace it with the word of God in our lives. I want you to remember 
what Paul said. He said, the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Remember, that's a prisoner held by deception. That's us, our minds. Oftentimes, we're held by deception from the devil. He says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We need to identify, reject the lies, and replace it with truth. Here is the truth. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. God loves you so much that he sent his son as a man, leaving heaven, humbling himself, to come and be the payment for our sins on the cross. Here's the truth. God loves you so much that if you were the only person, he would have done that for just you. God was willing to sacrifice his son, knowing full well that many would still reject him. That is how loved you are. That is how important you are. That is the truth about your soul and your being. And anything contrary to that does not come from God. It comes from the deceiver. So will you accept that truth or will you choose to listen to the lies? Identify, reject, and replace. In the morning when I rise In the morning when I Come to die.